Welcome to the latest episode of Upside TV. My name is Jack and I'm here at Rio Monte, the newest neighborhood in New Valley, Santa Rosa, developed by Ayala Land Premier. But before we get to anything, click on the subscribe button and even the bell button so you get notifications every time we release a new video. So coming from the Mediterranean house in Ayala, Alabang, that's for sale, we're taking you a little farther from the city because there's so many options here. But this is not Upside TV without it being a little extra, so I'd like to introduce to you a special guest. The man behind Hado Architects, his name is Architect Manolo Guanzon. Hi Manolo! Hi Jack! Hello! So are you ready to check out the lot with me? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, but before anything else, can you tell me about Hado? Well, Hado stands for Human Architecture and Design Office. Mm -hmm. It actually means energy in Japanese and faith in Spanish. We formed in mid-2017 after working for top 10 firms in the country. And our design aesthetic is modern contemporary with Asian elements. Oh, I love it. And you mentioned energy and faith. I like how the different translations and definitions still mix well together. Um, speaking of energy, what do you feel about this neighborhood? Well, I love the vibe. I see so much potential in it. Uh, I, can, I love the fresh air, all the greeneries. Mm -hmm. It actually uh, makes sense that a lot of people are moving in from the city. For sure. I'm sure you want the space to breathe and grow, especially for a startup family. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that the air is different, right? It's fresher. Exactly, like when you're cramped inside a condo, this is such a treat being surrounded by greenery. Actually, this lot that we're standing on is the latest listing on Upside that's for sale. So it's 510 square meters. And then it's around 230 to 235 above sea level. Can you tell me when it comes to site visits, what's on your checklist? So when we come to site, we always try to look at it from outside in. Yeah. So outside meaning the location itself, mm -hmm. access to the location, the boundaries, adjacent structures, yeah. and the social cultural context. Now inside, that's where we look at the natural conditions. Mm -hmm. So like for this space, we have the difference in elevation. The mm -hmm. terrain is very interesting. Uh, the views here are really beautiful. The sun path is mm -hmm. important, the wind path, uh, the existing utilities. Like actually, you can feel the breeze from Tagaytay and even have the views of Mount Makiling. So it really is really beautiful from here because you see the rolling hills. Oh yeah, yeah yes. So actually what's interesting about this lot mm -hmm. is that it's a single loaded lot. Okay, so what does it mean when a lot is single loaded? When a lot is single loaded, it means that one lot spans between two roads. Okay. So less neighbors in the back. Yeah, less cramp, less right? Cramped. Like there's more breathing space yes, for your home. Yes, definitely. As I mentioned, um, we're super close to the, the Tagaytay Ridge. Or actually not close, but you can see the views yes, of it. Yes, the views here and are great. And you talked about wind. Mm -hmm. And I can actually feel the breeze coming from Tagaytay Ridge down to the Kawang Kawang River. So I can just imagine this even like towards the afternoon or at night. It's oh, going to be yes. super cool in your home, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Another thing to note is that there are no electrical lines. I noticed. It looks so yeah. clean. That's true. Uh, you avoid the eyesore, the headache. Yeah. It's actually even better for maintenance. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the beauty about this development. But you know what? There's so much more you can see in this village and even around this community. So, do you mind taking them on a tour? Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's take a quick tour. Let's do it. So, the particular lot that I just showed you actually belongs to Neighborhood 3 because Rio Monte is a total of 85 hectares that's split into five pocket neighborhoods. So, each neighborhood has around 130 to 200 homes and then the lot also um, varies from 480 to 890 square square meters. So that's it's a, a huge range. range. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a young couple who's trying to find a home, this is the perfect place because yes. you can find the perfect fit. You for have different you. options, mm -hmm. right? You can scale up yeah. as, as, as you develop in the years. And it doesn't get overwhelming. You have that option to go big or small. I think that's a main factor in deciding to move from the city. Mm -hmm. That you have a lot of space, that you have a lot of options also economically. And speaking of like factors of moving here, did you know that 50% of the total land area here is dedicated for roadways, for amenities, and mm -hmm. even greenery? That's true, that's so true. So expect a lot of parks. Yes, <laughs> I can see parks. that. <laughs> yes. 
That's actually very interesting because most um, developments, a lot, 30 to 40 percent maybe. Okay. So having a 50 percent um, really makes a big difference. Yeah. So I was wondering about green homes. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. people um, want to build green homes, especially now that our electricity electricity bill has been like oh, yes. spiking up. It's been a hot topic. So what are your um, ideas about green home? Okay, so a green home, um, you must you have to understand that uh, a green home is made up of two um, strategies, is what they're called. They go hand in hand. They're either they're pa passive and active. So active is what we think about first: solar panels, rainwater collection, um, technology. Basically, it's usually added onto a house. So the passive side of that, um, which for me is more crucial is the principles actually baked into the design of a house. Uh -huh. So uh, these are the things like um, big enough windows, um, designing with a wind path, um, even to the building materials. Uh -huh. That is actually why uh, Bahay Kubo is so relevant until today. Oh, okay. yeah. So using those passive strategies, they've stood the test of time. So speaking of those factors, is it really expensive to build a green home? And is it something that you would recommend? Building a green home, yes. It's more expensive up front. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually about 20 to 30% more expensive. But in the long run, when you start having energy savings, yeah, when you start sure. um, having actual life benefits, uh, it should win you over. So yes, I would strongly recommend it. but. It's a commitment. You have to be sure of what you're getting into, um, not just uh, expenses-wise, but yeah. you know, it's it's the way you live your life in that house. Because you mentioned solar panels and also rainwater tanks, are they hard to um, take care of and maintain? Not really. Um, a solar panel system is very low maintenance. Oh, perfect. Um, occasional cleaning, maybe once, twice a year, just to. We make sure nothing is blocking the actual panel. Yeah. So you have to make sure the sun always hits it. So leaves, dust. Um, it's best if it's installed at an angle because yeah. the rainwater actually will clean it. Okay, so itself. it washes it down yeah. so you don't yeah. have to so, do it yourself. And for the rainwater tanks, they're just as um, intensive as a normal tank. So you wash it once a year, maybe Check twice. It regularly. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds pretty easy though, right? And based on the sizes of the lot, depends on what you pick as a family. Mm -hmm. It feels like you can actually even put up a, a little pocket garden for you That's to, true, yeah. to start with herbs and then even grow your own food, right? Yes, definitely. Well, I think that's where everything has to move anyway. You have to be self-sufficient, sustainable, where you are. So we're about to head out of the village, right? Yes, yes. We're actually heading to Miriam College. It's just a minute away from the gate. Perfect. So it's a good point that Rio Monte is actually very near reputable schools. Like you mentioned, there's Miriam School, there's also Xavier here, there's Everest. So you're surrounded by different options for your kids. So education really is not a problem. Yeah, a main point is where my kids will study. So knowing that that's there, those are your options. It's great. It's not just that. Like, apart from the schools, there are a lot of activities that they can do. Like one, we saw a lot of people who bike around the area. Yes, right? yeah. There's also like an outdoor camp nearby. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things, although I'm afraid to try it, mm -hmm. is that they have a wake park. They wake, yes, have a I've wake heard. park. A short drive from here, even a bike away from here. There's a wake park. Like so many things that they can do in the outdoors and it's all within the vicinity of the community. Yeah, it's all about uh, giving the families opportunities to stay active and yeah. fit. So that's just another bonus of living here. The other things that are actually here, I'm sure people thinking of moving, another issue is hospitals, yeah. malls. There are more than one. There's so more than one. Exactly. Uh, there's actually so many malls already here. There are at least two general hospitals. There are actually business parks nearby. Yeah. So that's not even an issue. You know what? I really, really want to move here already. And based on the lot 
that I showed you earlier, which is for sale, mm -hmm. and also the village in general. What are the ideas that you have in mind for the design? Well, initially, I saw the terrain. Mm -hmm. the, the leveling was very interesting, which we can really use in the design of the house. Yeah. So promoting the, the views and the natural light and air that would make some very interesting experiences in the home. But what I'm really thinking about is designing something that's more timely, yeah. something with health in mind. So people now are talking about um, quarantine rooms in the house, mud rooms, but what we're really thinking about is um, healthy flexibility for the home. So having spaces that are equipped for quarantine scenarios, but more so that the house itself is healthy. I think it's a big factor when you put in the green um, uh, factors or designs in the house. That alone will, you know, have more breeze in and out, will clear out whatever it is that's... It's not going to be congested, basically, yeah. right? And that makes the world a difference. I can super imagine it. But now, I'm trying to think, how long does it take for a house to be built and designed? For the design phase, it usually takes three to six months. Okay. But the build part usually takes 12 to 18 months. But of course, that changes case to case. Um, especially now that we're in a pandemic, those timelines are very vague. Yeah. Right? So, it can be flexible now. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because we never know when things might lock down. Yeah. So, in light of that, our office is actually offering some discounts on our design service. Mm -hmm. So, Please follow us on our socials and check out our website for more details. Ooh, exciting! So if you guys are ready to move out of the city and build your dream home in this beautiful lot that I just showed you, then do not hesitate to send us a message, okay? Because Team Upside will give you a personal tour. Thank you so much, Manolo, for joining welcome, me today. Jack. Thanks for having me. Thanks again for watching. And if you guys want to see more of these tours, click the thumbs up and also subscribe to all of our pages so we can show you how to hashtag live life on the upside. Again, this is Jack and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!